I'm, I'm assuming most people have seen have you guys seen that video um of that girl they're calling um soho karen that basically tried to uh that allegedly lost her phone in an uber and then she saw a little black kid in a hotel holding a phone that looked like hers when it went over and again assaulted the kid and it all spun into this whole big issue where effectively people are saying that she was racially profiling the dude and la 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 well the funny thing about this Karen girl is her interview that she did with Gail. <laughs> Let me see if I can get this up here. Where is it? Um, bu, 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 bu. Cool. So this is it, right? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, this is it. So this is a story. Let me see if I can get the original one up here. Lindsey Graham, Capital Writers. Where is it? So it, is that it? See this one? Yeah, this is her Karen. So this is it. From TMZ. So TMZ here reporting, Soho Karen arrested over cell phone attack makes first court appearance. She's been arrested, right? This woman, she's been arrested, um, you know, kind of pushed this a bit forward. But let's go to the actual video. So she sat down with an interview with Gail King to basically trying to, what, uh, rewrite the narrative, maybe, I guess, in some respects. A bit odd. It, no, I don't know, whatever in it. But here, look at the interview <laughs> with CBS this morning. Absolutely epic. <laughs> Oh, this girl's a flipping legend. Absolute legend. She got in the history. A woman caught on camera physically attacking a black teenager and falsely accusing him of stealing her cell phone has been arrested in California. It happened last night. You might remember this video. Mia Ponsetto approached 14-year-old Keon Harold Jr. at a New York City hotel last month accusing him of stealing her phone. His father, jazz musician Keon Harold, recorded the encounter and accused Ponsetto of racial profiling. Now, to be fair, I don't think they're telling us the entire story. Because from what I remember reading, she was supposedly in, the, in an Uber of the dad of the kid, right? And then I'm guessing she lost her phone somewhere along the journey. And then she thought that she lost it in that guy's Uber. She somehow, I guess, finds him, maybe... The car's still there and he's maybe taking his son to go do some shopping. Whatever happens, just transpire, they cross paths again. And then she's confronting him saying, hey, have you seen my phone? He's like, no, I don't have your phone. It's not in there. We don't have it. We don't have it. Then obviously the son's there. She sees the phone and then puts two and two together and just starts freaking out. That's what they're saying. But I don't know if that's a full story. I don't know if the, if like the kid was in the car as well you know some people like some uber drivers they might bring their kids with them or their wives I don't know, i've been sometimes to some ubers where you know they they just you know, i don't know the wife is bought at home she just she doesn't mind just sitting in the car um with her husband as he's driving around so that might be the thing so she might have thought oh no he was in the car too he would have would have saw it i'm not too sure but there are definitely pieces of story that are missing but regardless anyway the, the lows are is the lows involved um, actually involved this, this lady herself in it because she's absolutely unhinged. We have what you, you, see, you see two black people. No, I'm not letting him walk away with my phone. <laughs> now the video shows Ponsetto trying to stop the teenager from leaving the hotel lobby and then rushing toward them. Hotel surveillance video shows the 22-year-old woman tackling Keon Jr. Now he never had the phone. It turned up several minutes later at the hotel. New York City detectives went to California. Yet so it turned up in the hotels. I don't know what happened then. So who found the phone? Did, did someone find it on the floor and hand it into the hotel? I don't know. <clears throat> Yesterday to coordinate Ponsetto's arrest in connection with the confrontation. Look at her. She was contacted at a traffic stop in Ventura County <laughs> near Los Angeles. <laughs> Officials say that police had to pull her out of the car when she refused to get out. Now, in an exclusive interview, we had just done that interview yesterday afternoon. Her lawyer spoke with us before she was arrested. They told us that NYPD had not yet contacted them. Mia, help me understand. What made you think that Keon had your phone? That's why I'm confused. Why did you think he had it? I was approaching the, the people that had been exiting the hotel because in my mind, anybody exiting is probably the one that uh, might be the one that is trying to steal my phone. Oh, okay. So I don't know what the Uber story was about. I heard a story about an Uber. So she she was in a hotel. I'm I'm assuming in the, in the lobby, maybe browsing on her phone, and somehow between her and leaving, she dropped it somewhere. And then she assumed whoever was okay. That makes it worse then because then she she the first person she stopped <laughs> was a little black kid. <laughs> You're a psychopath. <laughs> I admit, yes. This I makes it much worse. The situation differently, or maybe not yelled at him like that and made him feel. And look at the optics too, right? You got Girl King here, who, you know, I guess 
last year summer or prior to pandemic she didn't have the best reputation right people didn't like um people didn't like that she um uh asked that question about kobe bryant's alleged rape to the WNBA player right do you remember so she's not in the, everyone's good books and then you've got this woman who's like you can't say white privilege because she's obviously not white but she's clearly suffering from some sort of privilege um syndrome or something right look look at the optics look at her glasses look at her upkept hair the daddy hat like the lack of makeup like come on so you know maybe some sort of uh inferior way of making him feel as if i was like hurting his feelings because that's not my intention i i consider myself to be super sweet i really never <laughs> super sweet okay cool never meant i can't wait to see those hoodies actually super sweet and super sweet hats <laughs> super sweet <laughs> Whoever, ref who, whenever someone refers to himself as something like that, like something so like lacking with lacking of substance and um, lacking of depth, information, brevity, whatever it may be, right? You have to sometimes chuckle at yourself. Super sweet. I'm really f it's like, who's that basketball player? I'm a really fun guy. <laughs> like what? Super sweet. For it to like hurt him or his father either are you saying that you were stopping everybody in the lobby asking them about your phone is that what you're saying this is the question um not everyone just the <laughs> just the blacks <laughs> just the people that in the meantime while, while the hotel manager was checking the, the footage i just wanted to do my part as best as i could and make sure no blacks leave the hotel room <laughs> like this girl is legitimately the most insane person i've seen in my life um not everybody just the blacks you just described yourself as super sweet i know you've seen the video when you you look at the video the reaction seems very extreme it doesn't seem like it's someone who's look at eyebrows like is, is that what do you think that is, is that speed adderall Cook? what is that Her, she is wired and I, I get don't get me wrong when you lose your flown when flown when you lose your phone you do go into a bit of a fight or flight situation right you start panicking especially the first time i think once you lose it like i say the first time because i've lost my phone many times i've got like my screen so if you can see on here my screen and my phone is cracked beyond belief, right? So I lose my phone. I've lost it on a continuous basis. I've not lost it in a while, but, you know, it happened a few times. But when you've, the first time you ever lose your phone, especially a smartphone that you've paid for, <clears throat> even if it's on contract, your heart starts to beat, right? You're like, oh, you start looking around. <laughs> you start asking everybody running around. But after the first time, you start to realize that more likely than not, if you've lost it, it's very unlikely someone's going to hand it back to you, right? It's gone. It's finished. It's, it's out there. Especially if you don't have a passcode and you don't have Find My iPhone. It's, it's gone. It's disappeared. It is what it is. You chalk up to the game. Or if someone is going to hand it over to you, all that's running around and fronting, uh, fretting and making everyone else panic. Because that's what I don't like also. When people like lose something or they're in a state of bother, they then somehow come over to you to, for you to kind of help them out. It's like, no, leave me alone. I don't want to have your funk like find it yourself like leave me alone um so that can be a thing as well and usually i found the more calm you are the more able you are to retrace your steps there might be the option or there might be yeah there might be an option where you can actually find it yourself you might actually be like oh shit i was in the off license around the oh i was in that shop oh damn i was in that gas station then you walk and bam you find it but all this frantic you know running around the hotel lobby pulling random black kids off of the street and <laughs> accusing them of stealing your phone isn't gonna work mate i guarantee you super yeah, sweet how would you feel if you were alone in new york and you know Get the you violin out. spend time with your family during the holidays <laughs> And you lose the one thing that gets stolen from you that has all of the access to the only way that you're able to get back. How do you feel? Um, I don't know. I'll tell you to maybe look after your phone. <laughs> I just don't think I would randomly attack people is, is, is what I'm saying to you. <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel if an undescript young black kid took your phone, but you have no way of telling them apart because to you, they all look the same. Like, what the hell is she saying? I know you said you could have handled it better, but I just don't think I would randomly attack people in the manner in which look you at face. <laughs> What do you think when you look at that video? You're standing there in your leggings and your flip-flops, and it Super looks sweet. like you're just going nuts, for lack of a better word. No, I'm not letting you walk away with my phone! I don't feel that that is who I am as a person. I don't feel like this one mistake does define me, but I do sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, apologize that if I made the sun feel as if I that's a that's a typical youtuber apology i apologize if you felt offended if i made you feel this way i love that apology it's such a non-apology i apologize if i made you feel that way 
if you got upset, if you felt like I was, um, what you call it, reminding your dad of a time gone by, like <laughs> I assaulted him, or if I hurt his feelings, or the father's feelings. I don't believe one mistake defines anybody, but I, I think. Yeah, Gail would say that, wouldn't she? Eh? When I look at that particular video. You're, you did more than just accuse him. The video seems to show that you physically attacked this young boy. She's lucky this kid is like a bit of a geek, right? His dad's a saxophone player or whatever, jazz musician. So he's probably brought up in a fairly um, decent household, right? Um, good morals, good ethics, well-mannered kid. If this was anybody else, she would have got her head kicked in, right? She would have got stomped to the ground. And then you know what would have happened? the black kid would have got arrested and he would have been the aggressor and it would have turned into a whole different story. The whole fact that this story is even being played out in public like this is because their family are pretty well to do and they want the girl to be brought up. They want the girl to basically first some sort of consequences, right? But imagine if this was just a regular kid that you see on like World Star Hip Hop. This is in New York as well, right? So this could, this is not even, I'm not even saying that to be like, you know, crass, but imagine this is like a regular kid of World Star Hip Hop. Like those kids that were doing wheelies in the middle of the street and they smashed up somebody's Mercedes recently. Imagine if it was one of them that she was grabbing up. She would have got a bike thrown on top of her head, mate. You do see that too, right? By the end of the day, the dad did end up uh, like slamming me to the ground and uh, pulling my hair and th throwing me and dragging me across the ground, so. That's a typical like um, white woman way of describing a physical incident. Whenever somebody breaks down a physical altercation like that, they pushed me to the ground and dragged me by my hair. And then like, that's when you know they're telling lies because they're breaking, because they're basically breaking down every segment of an altercation into its, its own little scene. So, you know, when you're like tussling with somebody, you're pushing and pulling them, you might push and pull their jacket and it accidentally grab their hair, but then they're going to break it down into the three phases. You go into the four or five phases. You grabbed onto my shoulder. You shook me vociferously. Um, you then uh, pull the back of my head until my scalp was bleeding. You know, those kind of like really odd descriptive words to make it sound so much threatening than what it is like. That's proper victim talk. Oh, I, I will say that. Yeah, but, but I think, you know, the video we saw, it looked like you had just attacked his son. Yeah, the footage. <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. <laughs> Look. Shows me attacking his son of attacking him how? Yelling at him? Yes. Okay, I apologize. Can we move on? I know you're saying I don't need to. I just want to apologize. But I do think that there should be some context to your actions that day. Okay, so basically I'm... I'm a 22 year old girl. I am, I, I don't, I, racism uh, is, I said, I, how is one girl? That's very Jordan Woods ish, right? Whenever I hear people say mention in their, their age, it reminds me of that Jordan Wood um, red table talk, right? I'm young, it's LA, um, you know, I'm just vibing. Like, it's that kind of like, come on, guys. Like, it's like, um, when you can't find the words to when you can't find the words to describe what you're trying to say you're just filling it with these like eh. <sighs> it's like no use your words motherfucker do you know what I mean you push this for when you're a kid on the floor because you thought you had your iphone 6 like fess up what happened girl accusing I was surprised, right, in this incident that she didn't say, um, hello, I love Drake. Like, I, that's what I was waiting for her to say. I was surprised she didn't say something like that. Guys, it's not about a race. It's like, my favorite artist is Ja Rule. Like, or something. I, about a phone. Free Casanova. Where is the context in that? Mia. What is the deeper, what is the deeper, what is the deeper story Mia, it's here? Not, it's, it, that's not the problem. You have to at least understand your actions that day. You seem to have attacked this little boy, this young boy, this, this teenager. You seem to have attacked this teenager about the phone. And then it turned out he didn't even have your phone. That's the thing. I mean, you're, you're, you're saying, look, I'm 22 years old. You're 22 years old, but you are old enough to know better. So I will say you're 22. I get it. Enough. The hotel did. <laughs> Like, look, don't get me wrong. I'm not Girl King's best, biggest fan in the world, but imagine a big woman like Girl King getting enoughed. Imagine. You are old enough to know better. So I will say you're 22. I get, get it. Enough. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is like the mirror. It's like the mirror contrast isn't it, of the two kids how they brought up. The 14 year old kid is essentially his dad's dealing with the entire thing. I've not, I don't think I've heard the kids talk once to press. I think his dad's dealing with it all through TMZ and, you know, suing and filing charges with the police, blah, 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 blah. Dealing with it the proper way. Then you've got this girl sitting alongside her lawyer, no parents, right? No family members are stepping up and basically defending her. She's basically on her own. And she's like, showing everybody how poorly she would brought up in it basically that's what you kind of feel sad about her about look because she, supposedly she's 22 and she looks much older um she's got a very um self-entitled view of the world and just thinks that she can flirt through the world without accepting any sense of responsibility at all and now finally reality is sort of like here in the face do you know what I mean the hotel did have my phone the hotel did end up having my phone. I did get my belongings returned to me. All right. Oh, wow. What a legend, isn't it? What a legend. Honestly, what an absolute legend of a young lady. Um, the things people do for their iPhones, isn't it? The things people do for their iPhones. I don't know. Like, God bless them all. I'm just a girl that's they all racist. Uh, oh. <laughs>